except people who play on the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour, or pretty much any tour around the world, you will be dealing with needing to slay your slice. Uh, most golfers who do not play professionally will curve the ball, they will slice the ball. For me as a right-hander, it's out to the right, and have some elements in that in your swing. So before we get on the golf course and try and break this 90 score, and, and uh, you know, head down to 85 and then hopefully closer to 80. I need you to be a slice slayer. Look, let's understand what causes a slice. Given that you hit the ball in the middle of the club face, a slice is caused when the face of the club is open to the path you are swinging the club on when you contact the ball. Now I'm going to hit a very small slice here, a baby slice. I'm going to open the face a lot, you can see that. I'm going to swing across my target line, you can see that. And this is describing what happens. That's a slice. It's a slice that went about 30 yards, and a lot of people have a slice that goes 200 yards or sometimes more. But that's what's happening with the slice. But it will be very difficult to break 90 if you have slice in your swing. So let the slice slayer work his magic right here. So first thing we're going to do to try and correct the open club face is I'm going to recommend to everybody who plays golf and wants to break 90, you get an old golf glove and you draw on it like that. Now I've drawn on it in a particular way, I'll go through it. I'm going to strengthen my grip. Strengthening the grip means turning my left hand towards my trail leg, my lead hand towards my trail leg, because that helps close the club face. Now, you can see from here that I've got that club and I'm going to put it partially in the fingers, partially in the palm, but I think you can see that heel pad, that dot I've put there, sits on top of the club. Now when it does, you will see from this camera angle, there is a V and that points to my trail shoulder. And as I glance down, I can see three knuckles. Now the best place to take that grip, by the way, I've seen many a good player do this. Adam Scott, the Australian, does this all the time. Address with the, well, take your grip, I should say, with your lead hand by your side. It will sit partially in the fingers, partially in the palm. It'll allow you to get that club, that, that left hand, lead hand, sitting a bit on top of the club. And that goes a good way to making sure that the club face isn't closed. A lot of people say, oh, I think my grip's fine. Trust me. It probably isn't, and at least investigate this. Does it feel different? Do yourself a favor, draw some lines on, a, on an old glove like this and see how that helps. Second thing to try and have you keep the club face uh, from being open to the path of your swing when you hit the ball. Second thing, as you swing back, keep the club face looking towards the ball. Now those two things alone will very often correct a slice, and add distance, by the way, so that double benefit there. But if I get the grip in the right place in my hand, and I keep the club face looking at the ball as I'm going back, I have a very good chance of squaring the club face to the path of the swing. And again, I'll just hit a short one so it saves in camera range. But that squares up the club face. That even closed the club face a little bit, so there'd be no slice in that. Third thing, so there's three parts to this. Let me just hit one actually with the better grip and keeping the club face looking at the ball in the takeaway. And I think probably this ball should hook a little bit. It certainly shouldn't slice. As I swing this, it shouldn't slice. I'm not gonna go full speed. Yeah, you may or may not be able to see that, but that one hooked away to the left a little bit. You probably could see it. Uh, and that's just showing you that if you strengthen the grip and keep the club face looking at the ball, you've got a good chance at it. Now, could you do that and still slice it? Regrettably, you could, because you might need a bit of help on the downswing. Now, those of you that have watched me over the years, thank you for that, but you know that I love images because I believe images prompt motion. If I can show you something that's very relatable to, like maybe knocking a post in the ground with a hammer, which I'm going to do in a moment, you might think, I'm going to swing as if there was a, well, let me show you. If your golf instructor was dedicated enough or crazy enough, whichever way you want to say it, to describe a golf swing this way, 
If I was to put a wooden post in the ground there, you can see that post is somewhere behind my heel line. And if I were to take a hammer, I would want my downswing to be as if I was banging a post in the ground. Now, do you see how that post is behind my heel line? This is why it is a great confusion to me as why people make such a big deal about getting the club in front of you. It's in front of you at times in the swing and at times it must be behind you. So as a thought, you don't have to go to the, you know, the lengths of doing this, but just, just think, you know, if I did have a hammer and I was going to swing and that block of wood was there, what would I have to do? You'd have to bring your hands down. They wouldn't go out because that's going to have you cut across the ball and exasperate that slice. So if I did that with a driver, not that I'm going to hit the golf ball, but if I did that with a driver, gosh, this feels light after that hammer. But if I went to the top and I thought, I'm going to swing that club down, this is a hammer. That's what most of the pros are doing. They're not carrying it out here. They're swinging it down. So many a time I will get Golfers, when I'm trying to get them to break 90, I will get golfers and I will have them imagine there's a post back there. It's called a downswing because you're swinging the club down. It's not called an outswing, it's a downswing. So, third of four points to be a slice slayer. Number one is a grip. Number two is keep the club face looking at the ball as you're going back. And number three is hammer time. Hammer a post into the ground. Now, if you do that, you have almost guaranteed that you are not going to slice the golf ball. That's actually about as good as I've got there. Beautiful bit of draw on that shot. I should try that a bit more often, I think, actually. Now, one last point, and literally it is one last point. External swing focus. If you were to swing to the end of your golf swing, and you would imagine coming out of the golf club, there was a laser pointer, a laser beam. I would want that laser beam pointing absolutely at the flag stick, or maybe, in my case, a bit to the right of it because I'm right-handed. Here's what I wouldn't want. Wouldn't want that. That's a great way to never hook the ball again, which is another way of saying slice it forever. Don't want you to do that. So as you swing through, one last point. You're going to point the club somewhat to the right of the target. Now, I did say in an earlier segment, having a swing thought is good. If you try and strengthen the grip and keep the club face looking at the ball and hammer it in the ground and point the club at the end of the target, you won't do very well. So don't do that. Pick one. Doesn't matter which one, but pick one. Uh, I would say for the longest time, I've always liked to pick that one actually learned it from Sir Nick Faldo, great player, six-time major champion. So I can do the grip before I get going. I can waggle the club face looking at the ball. I'm not going to think about the hammer. I've practiced that, and I'm going to point that grip towards the target because you are on your way to being a slice slayer. Here we go. Pretty straight, didn't quite draw the amount I wanted it to, but pretty straight, that wouldn't hurt me one little bit. So be a slice slayer. Get rid of the cut on your golf ball, but learn to cut the scores on your scorecard. <laughs>